19 speed power shift for uh, John Deere 7600 through 7810. So there's a couple things I want to show you about identification. If you have a 100 series tractor, it doesn't matter. If you have a 10 series tractor, your transmission serial number will tell us which one you need. If that tag is missing, then we would want an image of your FEMA valves. Just the outside, that coil will tell us which one you need. We only sell two transmissions, 7 PST1, 7 PST2. Information is in those part listings. The one thing that is a, to be determined is we just sewed the mate to this and there was a question about a plug right here. And it's a question that I've never had. And we've been selling these for quite a while. So I uh, don't know that it matters, but that's something we're going to uh, have to make sure that if it's important. I guess my point is we probably haven't been that lucky. So it may not matter. So when it comes to buying one of these, uh, probably I'm, I'm going to try to make this quick, but uh, I'm going to start with the lowest price. So the bill on this one, which was just a takeout, it wasn't a core. It was something that came out of a tractor. So a uh, tractor had a cab fire. So we, we're going to assume it was running and driving when it, when it failed, or excuse me, when the cab burned. Also, the notes for parts it was put in does not indicate any major mechanical part that was replaced. On your front pump section here, this is aluminum and um, it's got a steel pump on it. That's the first place you're gonna start having problems. If you don't address that low pressure, then you get low lube and then that's where you get a catastrophe or, or a grenade, if you will. So fully disassembled all the way down to the individual part level. Everything is checked, everything is specced, um, and we replace it or reassemble it with all new wear parts. So here we're gonna surface, resurface the pump cover, and that's something you can do on your own if that's all you need. But unless you have a, unless you have a mechanical failure past the pump section. You don't need to buy a complete transmission. It's just too much. So, from pricing, basically R&R &R on a 19-speed transmission would start at $15,000. So that's a full disassemble. Inspect all the parts. Reassemble with all new wear parts. You can use the word reman if you like. We don't like to use that because we don't want anybody to misinterpret what the process is. And any item that would have to be replaced is would be on top of that. So if you have a, it would be just, it's done just like in a dealership. Is the easiest way I can can explain it. The problem with that is that there's a lot of these parts that are no longer available or they sub you to 10 other parts because you just have one bad. Now that's not us doing that, that's just how it rolls in the part catalog. So you may have a $15,000 standard or base overhaul, but if you've got a planetary that's bad and they sub you, you and its related items up to 10 more parts, you know, you could have another $10,000 tied up in it. So those are issues that we try to avoid, but uh, this being a, we've been selling this for 30,000. We don't sell it all the time. Uh, I know there's, a, there's, some other <laughs> there's some other places on the internet that you can find this as a, as a uh, reman power shift for 15,000. I don't know how they would do that if it cost us 15000 to actually just go through this. So my only suggestion there is that maybe you figure out, you know, find out uh, what their process is. 
if that's a true process, that's a bargain. I'd snatch it up and I'd go. Um, we're only, a, you know, we should only be considered if you have a major failure and if you don't feel good about the other price. So just trying to explain how we price it, why we price it the way we do, how we warranty it, uh, what we want you to do as far as the customer's uh, responsibility so that everybody knows up front what we got. And if that's all done, you know, you're going to run another, you know, 10,000 hours. If you don't do that, it's not going to run 10,000 hours. It probably fails or starts having issues within the warranty period. That's where you get into the stickiness of, you know, what was done, what, what wasn't done. And we want to avoid that at all costs. So we're just, we, we try to be upfront with what we expect. It's not asking you to do anything out of the service guidelines by the manufacturer. And just because the manufacturer doesn't suggest that oil samples are required at every 250 hours, um, deep in their warranty pieces, it is there. So um, we would rather have full disclosure up front and not sell it to you than to sell it to you for cheap and then you have a problem and tell you that you're on your own. So... If we can help you out, great. And if uh, not, we got plenty of parts for the uh, rest of the tractor.